Yes, this is delicious homemade cornbread dressing. Your family going to love it this holiday season. So stay tuned and see how I get this put together. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me on Dish With Me, Heather D. And today I have a really special treat. I'm going to show you how I make my homemade cornbread dressing. Thanksgiving is next week and we're going to really need to vamp this up with a good southern tasty cornbread dressing. So we're going to start out with a two-part series. Actually, this will be. I'm going to show you how I make my broth and how I prepare my cornbread for my dressing. And part two, I will show you how I put this all together to make one of the most famous dishes that is used every holiday around Thanksgiving time. So we're going to start out with our turkey. And right here, I have some turkey parts. I have smoked turkey next, and I also have some regular turkey. And what I'm going to do is place it into a pot here. And you want to good, get a really good sturdy pot. This is my stainless steel pot. I'm going to add two cups of chicken broth to my turkey's pieces. So just going to pour them in here. They have already been cleaned. Um, if you like to see how I do my prep work with my meat when I bring it from the meat market, I will put the link below in the description box. I have soapy bleach water already ready for me, which I try to keep whenever I'm planning on doing some cooking and stuff. I have right here two, um, actually it's just one celery stalk that I cut in half. And I have um, a quarter of a bell pepper. I'm not cutting these up because this is just going to flavor up the um, turkey pieces and the parts. You can use turkey, you can use chicken, whatever you like. I am going to add to this pot some salt, pepper. I have some um, onion pieces here, you know, the dry minced onion, sage, and poultry seasoning. I will have the ingredients in the description box below. I'm just going to go ahead and pour that in. And then I'm going to take my chicken broth and pour that in also. And this really gives the chicken and the turkey all those flavors to incorporate. Now, I want this to be completely covered. So I'm going to go ahead and add two more cups of water to this. And try to make sure that everything is pretty much submerged in all the, um, all the meat is submerged. So that way it could be completely covered and get a nice, you know, flavor. Now this is going to make a lot of broth. I'm not going to make a lot of cornbread because unfortunately my oldest two kids are not big on cornbread dressing. I really don't know why. Um, I don't know where it came from, but you know, everybody is different, you know, no respect, you know, disrespect to their taste buds. But um, I like to make a lot of broth just in case I wanted to make soup or if I wanted to make something else that may cause for, you know, chicken broth. So with that being said, I'm going to place this to the side and I'm going to put this on the burner and let this cook on medium to medium low and let this cook for probably about a good hour, hour and a half because I want these turkey parts to really be tender and ready to fall off the bone. So I'm going to place this on my burner back here and turn it to... The middle, which is number five, and I'm going to go ahead and let that cook. And we'll be right back as I get my cornbread ingredients together. Okay, now that I'm back, I'm going to show you how I prepare and make my cornbread for the cornbread dressing. So I'm going to start out with self-rising flour. And I like to use self-rising flour because, to me, it kind of make the process a little easier and quicker because I don't have to worry about adding the salt or the baking powder. It already has it in there. So I like to use King Arthur. I'm not a spokesperson, but that's just what I like to use. I'm using unbleached self-rising flour. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my yellow cornmeal mix, which is also um, self-rising. And this helps a lot in the process. When you have your self-rising cornmeal and your self-rising flour that really just makes it easier for you like i said in uh, less steps in the making of the cornbread so i'm going to use one and one quarter cup of the self-rising cornmeal and this is yellow cornmeal 
um, if you don't have yellow. And if you can't find self-rising cornmeal or flour, go ahead and just use all-purpose flour and the regular cornmeal. And then just add your salt and baking powder to it. Now, one step that I noticed that uh, a lot of people like to do is add like a couple teaspoons or tablespoons of sugar. I do not add sugar to my cornbread unless I'm making it for just to eat or consume in its regular state. Um, I do add sugar. But for my cornbread dressing, I do not add sugar. So for those who do and see my video and like, what? She didn't add sugar? That's my preference. And that's how I was um, taught not to add sugar because this is a savory dish. Um just like the debate with the whole, do you add sugar to your spaghetti? Yes, I add a few pinches of sugar to my spaghetti to cut the bitter taste of the tomato paste. But hey, to each their own. We're not going to get onto that debate. So I took a half a stick of unsalted butter and I placed it in here. And what I'm going to do is use my little pastry, blend, my pastry blend and just kind of... Blend this up together with the flour and the cornmeal until it is looking like a very nice mealy texture like you would do for um, making pie crust or something. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of blend this all together. And you see, just going to kind of work this all, to, all through. And I'll be right back. Okay, now that I am done with my... Um, with my butter and my cornmeal and flour mixture, there are two things I forgot to mention. You will need one egg and you will need to preheat your oven to 405 degrees. Now you wanna do it five degrees higher because you really wanna kinda of make your cornbread dry out some because that's gonna be your base to your dressing. You don't want it to be too moist. So I set my temperature to 405. Um, if you want this full recipe on how I make my homemade cornbread for the dressing, I will put the link at the bottom below because I, in one of my previous videos, I show how I make homemade cornbread. But only thing you can choose whether or not you want to add your sugar. But in making my cornbread dressing, like I said, I do not use sugar. So if you want, I will add the link at the bottom. And... Also put in parentheses, you may remove sugar. You know, that's optional. So my butter is all well blended into my flour and cornmeal. So now I'm going to add my one egg as my binder. Put this to the side. And I'm going to add one cup of milk. And if I need to, I'll add more milk. Not for sure yet. I will know once I mix this all together. So I'll put this to the side. And turn my burner down a little bit because my chicken, my turkey is starting to bubble really well and I don't want any spillage. So I'm just going to mix my cornbread up. And like I said, because my kids do not like cornbread dressing, this is just enough pretty much for um, my youngest and my fiancé and myself. And I'm just going to give this a good mixture, mix, not mixture, a good mix until it is well combining incorporated. And it's only about, mm, take probably about a good two or three minutes. To mix this all up or less just want to make sure that everything is well combined no dry spots anywhere once you have this all well combined then we're going to place this into a baking dish and we're going to bake this for about a good 30 to 35 minutes or until a golden brown and then we're going to let it go in maybe five minutes longer just so that way it can get a little drier for this delicious, delicious cornbread dressing. So, if you watch my video before, you see I'm using one of my brand new uh, baking sets from my fiance that I got for my birthday. 
I'm like so anxious to use this. I've already used the pots and I really, really love it. So now I'm going to use the other half stick of butter that I had left over from the cornbread. And I'm just going to rub this all around to make sure that the cornbread has some really good flavor. Because I like my cornbread to have that nice buttery coat on the outside. Just going to make sure this is well covered all the corners because you don't want your cornbread to stick either depending on what kind of pan you're using for your cornbread just going to place that here and with clean fingers just rub it all the way all the way around the sides and everything all right now I'll wash my hands in my soapy bleach water Get all that buttery off, buttery filling off my fingers. Okay. So now I'm going to pour my cornbread into my pan here. This recipe can be doubled if you're making or tripled if you want, depending on the size of your family, who all you want to have over, um, and just how many people actually like dressing and who doesn't. Once you get it all poured inside your pan, you want to spread it out. Make sure that it is evenly distributed into your baking dish. Almost like you would do a cake. Because like I said, you don't want any wet spots. I'm going to shake this around. Almost like you do a cake. Not necessary, but it's just a habit. So I'm going to place this in the oven, like I said, and let this bake for 35 to 30 to 35 minutes. Maybe give or take, depending on how golden brown it gets. And we'll be right back. And once I clean this all up, I'm going to show you how I prep up my vegetables for my cornbread dressing. Okay, now that we have everything cleared up, now it's time to get to the vegetables. And what I'm going to use is like a quarter of a, of a bell pepper. You can use whatever color you like. I have two celery stalks that I kind of mm, cut in half. Because the bottom part, I didn't want all that white. But I did not throw it away because that is the best part to use when you want to make a good vegetable broth. So whatever leftover parts of veggies you have, just put them inside of a Ziploc bag and put them in your freezer. Save them for whenever you want to make a good chick, um, vegetable broth for a dish. I have um, a half a piece and two whole green onions and cut off the little, you know, the little limpy part. Then I also have a what are these onions? What are these onions called? Brain freeze. Mm -hmm. uh, not Shallot. Yeah. Okay, so like I said, you want to have a half a shallot. Excuse me with that little momentarily brain fog. So, some people like to pre-cook their vegetables before they put them into your dressing, to their dressing. But guess what? Not I. Yeah, a little unconventional for those of you who are used to cooking your vegetables to go into your dressing. But I don't. You know why? Mine are cut up nice and small. Now, with this step, it's optional. If you're used to pre-cooking your vegetables, go right ahead. But I think you get more flavor when you just chop up your vegetables very, very small. So that way, all of those flavors will, will be released into your cornbread dressing 
versus pre-cooked in a skillet where all your flavors are coming out and then you're pouring it in there. I mean, you know, you're getting it in, but you done broke it all, you already broke it down. You want to get all those flavors and stuff. So I'm going to show you how I go about chopping these veggies up really small. Okay. So, we're going to start out with our bell pepper. And you want to use a really good knife. If you don't have a really good knife or a knife that you feel that is sharp enough for this job, then you go ahead and just use your food processor. But I'm going to cut this into almost a mince. Because we want all these flavors to go into our dressing. We don't want to pre-cook it where they are broke down inside of a skillet. I mean, you know, if you feel that that is okay, like I said, um, go right ahead. I just like mine to melt or to, you know, all those flavors to dissolve into the cornbread dressing at its, you know, at its fullest. So after you get them, and this is how skinny they are. They almost look like little shoestrings but this is how skinny i cut my bell peppers and now i just go ahead and do a mince chop see how small these are almost confetti size and when they are this small yes they will cook fully inside of the dressing and no they will not be crunchy i have been making dressing for about a good, mm, almost 20 years um, on my own without relying on my mother. And this is the way my mother showed me how to do it. So I'm just gonna go ahead. And just kind of go through and chop it up. Almost minting it. And there you have all your bell peppers minced in this fine fashion. Look how small those pieces are. When your peppers are this small, you will not have to pre-cook them. And I'm going to show you how to do the same method with the celery. Just going to put that to the side there. For the celery, you want to do the same thing. Going to cut it in half. Then you're going to cut the halves into fourths. And then you're going to cut those fourths even smaller. You want these to be as skinny as possible. This is all to help make sure that you get all the flavors you want in your dressing without losing them in pre-cooking. Now, I cut these, these, this one stalk into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pieces. And actually, these two can probably be cut a little bit smaller. There. Look how skinny and thin they are. Now to cut them. And like I said, this is using a very sharp knife. Almost into confetti. If this is too many steps, like I said, go ahead and use a fruit processor and do like a coarse chop. But the whole idea is to make sure they are fine, fine, fine in your dressing. Especially if you have picky eaters that don't like to taste the big bell peppers and all of those big chunks inside of their dressing or food, period. This is a perfect step. Just gonna cut that up some more. And that is all done. Look how small that is. It's so small, that's gonna dissolve in the dressing. You don't even need to cook it. Put that to the side. Okay. 
Now for the shallot. Same technique. You want to cut this up into very small pieces. And because the shallot already has layers of it because of it being an onion, you just want to make sure that you cut it into small, like you would do a garlic clove, into very small pieces. Mincing it up. And look at that. Confetti. All your vegetables should almost be in like confetti form. All these flavors are going to dissolve into that cornbread dressing where you do not need to pre-cook any of it. I noticed in some of the videos, and then you know, like I said, to each their own, everyone has different techniques on how they make their cornbread dressing. This is just my technique, and I love how my dressing comes out full of flavor doing it this way. Um, no pre-cooking, just a matter of taking the time out to chop up my vegetables extra fine. As you notice in a lot of my videos, I always say finely chopped bell peppers, onions, garlic. You know, whatever the vegetable is. Unless I'm making like a stew or a soup of some sort. But for the sake of my taste buds and my children, um, the whole idea is to finely chop. And you want to try to make sure that you can get them as even as possible if you want to chop them. But this is going to be a very good dressing. Your dressing will be full of flavor if you do this step. I guarantee and your family will not be able to tell. Yes. Just to the side. Alrighty. We're going to get this all cleaned up and I'm going to show you what's next. As you can see, our cornbread is done. It is nice and golden brown. And now we are going to let this cool overnight. I still have my broth cooking and my turkey parts cooking so that way they'll be ready for tomorrow. But I'm going to let this cool down with um, and cover this up. And tomorrow I will show you part two on how I put this all together and getting this cornbread dressing ready for Thanksgiving. Hope you like this video and please continue to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'd like to thank all the new subscribers that I have gained over these last two weeks. I really, really appreciate it. And if you are new to this channel, make sure you click like, share, and subscribe and check out my other videos. I will link in the description box the cornbread recipe from my previous video and also how I clean my turkey parts and any poultry and meats that I get from the meat market. Stay tuned for tomorrow's whole assembly of this dish. Hello and thank you for joining me on Dishing With Me, Heather D. And today is part two of our cornmeal dressing and our homemade cornbread dressing. Let me get that straight. And if you watched the beginning part of this video, you saw how I chopped up my vegetables for it and how I chose not to pre-cook it because they are quite small pieces and the dressing when it cooks it'll help that um, small pieces of the vegetables to melt and not melt but to you know flavor your dressing where it won't leave them crunchy chunks inside like some um, dressing if you do not pre-cook your veggies this is my um, broth and my chicken and my turkey pieces that I'm going to use in my dressing. Um, if you've seen that in the beginning, my cornbread, I sampled a little piece in the corner, as you can see. Um, I just had to taste it and make sure that everything was okay and it tastes perfect. This, I have a little bit of more poultry, pepper, and sage that's gonna go into my dressing. The same seasonings I pretty much used to cook the broth. I want this to be a nice, 
delicious flavored cornbread dressing and it is just going to add the right amount of seasoning and texture that you need and all a matter of flavor um uh oh, staging or all those different layers of flavor to blend together i can't get my words right today for some reason i also have over here some pre-cooked chi pre-cooked chicken this is some chicken I'm going to mix into my dressing because sometimes I like my dressing to have little bits of chicken pieces in it to give it a really nice flavor and just to add that little bit of a bite. I'm not going to add a lot, but, you know, just enough. And, of course, this is optional. What I also have is some cream of chicken here. Now, this is going to help, help aid into that juiciness of the dressing as well as... A little bit of butter. I'm not going to use this whole stick. I'm just going to use about a half of this stick to add to the dressing. And this is an optional step. Stove top cornbread dressing. Some people would like to use the turkey or the chicken, which is fine. But I prefer the cornbread version of this to add to the cornbread dressing. That way it doesn't have too much of a stove top flavor. Now, if you plan to, um, if you don't find the cornbread and you choose to do the chicken or the turkey, that's fine also. This is actually not a step that you have to use, but this is just what I choose to use as a filler because this is how my mom showed me. But a lot of times, some people choose to do um, cornbread Pepperidge Farm bag that have the cornbread crumbles or the little crouton looking pieces that is also a good choice to use also as a filler so we're going to start out with our cornbread that we made yesterday and i'm just going to crumble this up into the bowl here and like i said the reason why i'm not doing such a large portion my kids not a big fan of homemade cornbread dressing. I, I, I don't know where they came from. And um, ignore my daughter as she tries to creep by because she should have had her stuff together for her class today. And she chose to just wait to the last minute while I'm recording this video to try to creep by. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I was saying, she's one of the three that do not like cornbread dressing. Um, I'm just going to crumble this up really well. And this is just going to be the base for our cornbread dressing. Just going to crumble this up. You can use a spoon if you want. I have really good clean hands. I'm not going to use my injured one. And once you crumble that up, then I'm going to add my cornbread stove top dressing now the reason why i like the cornbread like i said because it has some of the same texture as our cornbread that we're using here but it also has a lot of the same seasonings and flavors that you use for dressing it has the sage the poultry and you know a little bit of um dried vegetable and herbs and stuff in it which is really really good i'm gonna place this to the side Give this a little bit of a stir to incorporate that some. Now I'm also going to add some of my chopped up veggies in here. Now if you don't, if I don't use the whole thing, this can be froze and saved for another dish. And I believe... This is probably good enough because I don't want the bell peppers, onions, and the celery to overpower this dressing. And, of course, I'm going to mix this up a little bit because I wanted to make sure that everything is well incorporated. And I'm going to use part of this shredded chicken in here. Now, you can cut it up smaller pieces than what I have. You know, it's totally up to you. I like nice big chunks inside. Some people have known to use um, sausage, which is also an option, you know, but I'm keeping it straight poultry. If I wasn't going to use any turkey parts in this, then 
I would have probably did the whole dressing with the um sausage, which is probably something I will use for another video. Now for the um broth, I'm gonna move this stuff to the side. I'm gonna scoop this over. I re preheated or reheated up my um, turkey pieces and my broth here. I'm not going to use the celery that I used to season this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to just pour some of this. Just going to pour that in. You don't want to pour too much because you don't want your dressing to be too soupy. So you kind of pour accordingly. And that totally absorbed everything. So I'm gonna have to pour some more of that broth in here because we do not want this dressing to be dry. You don't want a dry dressing. So it's better to have enough broth prepared than not enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest. And clearly, of course, that is not enough. But thankfully, I do have some chicken stock on hand. I'm going to go ahead and add this cream of chicken also to here. This too is an option. Some people would even use um, chicken and rice soup um, because the rice pieces is so small. It's really hard to... Um, you know, really taste it if you mix it in with your cornbread. It's an option. Okay, I got my chicken stock out the refrigerator and I'm gonna add it to my can and kind of loosen up whatever pieces or whatever is left of the soup in here. And I'm just gonna mix that in. Yes, it's cold straight off the fridge, but it's gonna get baked in the oven. I'm just gonna mix this all up Ooh, you can smell that poultry seasoning and that sage. You know, it's just, it's all heated nicely. Mm, mm, mm. It smells so good. It smells like Thanksgiving right now. It smells delicious. And you can see my extra broth is starting to allow my um, dressing mixture here to become nice and moist. That cream of chicken. Having problems this morning, like I said. I don't know what's going on. I'm splattering everywhere. You don't want it too soupy, but you want it just right. And this is almost like just right with the texture of my dressing. I'm just going to add this seasoning mix here. And it's probably about a half a teaspoon each of my pepper, sage, and poultry seasoning. The recipe will be in the description box below. Mix this all up. Oh, yeah. Add a little bit more broth. You kind of have to eyeball it when it comes to the broth. Um, just kind of add until you get the right consistency you're looking for before you decide to bake it in the oven. Yeah, this is just right. Oh, it smells so good smells delicious now before you add your egg this is the perfect time to taste your dressing so i'm going ahead and get a spoon make sure that it is well seasoned and that way you don't need to see if you need to add any more salt or anything else that might be missing mm. Mm, 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 mm. it's perfect Nicely seasoned. Mm. Now, I'm going to add half of this butter. And the butter is an option. You know, I like that buttery flavor in my dressing because of the cornbread. It is really, really good. Use this half a stick. And then make sure that you break it down. Now, as a whole, you would want to melt this if your dressing is not hot enough. And I probably should have. 
go ahead and mix this up. As a matter of fact, as my blooper for today, I'm going to go ahead and pump, pull this lump out and melt this down. I'll be right back. So I have melted my butter. Now I'm going to add this to the dressing. Like I said, it's going to give it a really nice flavor to your dressing. I just love to add, just like I said, a half a stick along with all those seasonings and flavors. It's going to go well with this dressing. So I'm just giving this a good mix. Make sure everything is incorporated. And that is perfect. Now to add my egg. Hmm. I need to break this egg or something. Aha. I try not to break my eggs directly over my things. Okay. One egg as a binder. Mix this all up till it's well combined. And once you get everything mixed up, then it is time to get this panned and ready to go into the oven, which is going to bake at 375 degrees. And I'm going to bake it covered first for about good 25 to 30 minutes. Then I'm going to bake it uncovered for about another 20 to 25 minutes, just so that way it could get a nice crust on top. So your total baking time will be anywhere between 45 to 50 minutes to make sure that it's still moist but still have like that little bit of a crunch on top. So now that this is all well mixed, I'm going to put this to the side here and I'm going to get my pan that I'm going to use, which is a nice iron skillet here. Now, this iron skillet is perfect to use for dressing, or you can use any type of pan that you have available. I'm going to use a little bit of butter to flavor this. I'm just going to rub this butter all the way around, because this is a non-stick um, uh, iron skillet that I ordered, and... It is so nice. It's perfect for, you know, on top of the stove cooking or even in the oven. And something about a good iron skillet just seems to be the best thing to use when it comes to cornbread. And even when it comes to dressing, if possible. But like I said, if you don't have one, feel free to go ahead and just use whatever dish you have available. So now I'm going to pour my dressing in here. And you're going to get it all the way out. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Probably should use a spatula, but a good 95, 99.9% .9 has already come out. So I'm just going to work with what I got. I spread it out a little bit. Make sure it cooks evenly. And then what I'm also going to do with this dressing is add some of my turkey pieces on top of it. Now, these are already fully cooked from yesterday because that's what I used to boil them. But sometimes to make this look presentable, instead of having a whole turkey sitting in the middle, or you can even use Cornish hens or whatever, just going to sit these turkey wing pieces right on top and it's going to give it some nice flavor. I have some smoked turkey neck pieces as well as ooh, bell pepper. Smoked turkey neck pieces as well as some um, turkey wings. Ooh, another bell pepper. That shows you how well and nicely flavored this dressing is. Wing part it's just going to all soak through on this dressing and of course this step is optional but this is what I like to do and there's another partial 
turkey wing in there. I guess I'll save it for my son to devour. So I'm going to get some foil. And this is going to cover, like I said. And cook for about a good 25 to 30 minutes. And then it's going to uncook for about a good 20 to 25 minutes. My oven is already preheated, so I'm going to stick this in there and we'll be right back. Okay, so our timer has gone off and I'm about to remove it from the oven and I'm allow you to see what the dressing looks like after it has baked. Boy, oh boy, my house is smelling like Thanksgiving right now. So. Ooh. Nice, nice. I'm going to bring that camera a little bit closer. So that is what my dressing is looking like so far. So now it's going to bake in the oven uncovered for about a good 20 to 25 minutes. So that way those little wet spots can get a nice toasty brown. And the meat and everything can also get that little crispiness on there too. So we're going to let this bake, like I said, for 20 to 25 minutes and we'll be right back. Okay, everyone, so my, I guess my camera kind of went down a little bit. So my dressing has completely baked. Now it's time to take it out the oven so that way you can see how this baby looks. Let me get my heating pan there. Ah! Ooh, this baby is pretty full. I gotta let y'all get a closer look at this. It came out perfect. Just gonna fold this over. And bring this up a little closer for you. About right there. And look. Look at that baby. It is perfectly browned, just the way I like it. Chicken and smoked turkey pieces is all done. Mm -hmm -hmm. You all just don't realize how happy I am that this dressing has came out so beautiful. Now, before you serve your dressing, you want to wait a good 15 to 20 minutes before you decide to plate that baby up on a, you know, platter or however you plan to serve it. So, I wonder if I can wait a good 15 or 20 minutes. Well, to keep from burning my tongue and my mouth, I'm going to go ahead and wait those few little minutes. We'll be right back and we are going to taste this baby. Okay. So you know what time it is to taste this bad baby. Once again, let's look at it. Let's observe its beauty. Mm -mm -mm. Gonna go ahead and dig into this. Can I get my camera to come down any lower? Not really. So I'm gonna have to hold it. So. I am going to get some of this turkey right here. Mm hmm. Got a little piece of turkey. It's all tender. Oh, look, it's still nice and moist. Look at that. It got meat inside. Mm mm mm. Okay, so I didn't wait the full. 15, 20 minutes. I only waited about 7 or 8 minutes. It smelled too good. Get some more of that. See, that butter gives it that nice little crust on the outside. 
And that's what's going to make this dressing taste so good. Yes, it's going to taste delicious. Your family's going to love it. I'm telling you, your family will love it. I'm trying to get this camera. Ah. Come on, camera. Let's, let's stay focused. Let's stay focused. I need you to hold up. Technical difficulties. I'll be right back. Okay. I got it the way I want. We're about to taste this. Look at this. The vegetables are fully cooked. They are not crunchy. Why? Because we cut them up into small pieces. We cut this up so that way all those flavors can melt and marinate into this dressing. I just want to talk about this dressing for a second because before I bite into it, I mean, you're going to really, really, let me tell you, this dressing, I got the recipe from my mother, the idea, some of the concepts and stuff, I twisted it to make a little more personalized and stuff, but overall, this is a very good dressing. Your family going to love this so much. I mean, there is nothing about this dressing that should have them not love it. All you need is like some homemade gravy, which I probably will show in another video next time. But this dressing, I mean, look at it. Just look at it. It's moist. It's not dry. See the nice steam come from it. It's full of flavor. Now to taste it. Okay, for real. Mmm. This is the bomb. Mm. This video better get a whole bunch of likes. And I hope I get some more subscribers. And I hope that you all share this video. Let me tell you. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Let me tell you. When you're doing a circle pan, an iron, and you butter it real good, it gives it a really nice crunch on the outside. That little brown edges and stuff, that crunchy part is what makes this dressing so good. Mm. All the flavors from the broth, flavors on layered flavors and layered flavors. The turkey parts is what add that smoked turkey next. Wings, whatever smoked turkey piece you use in this dressing, that's what helps this, this dressing taste so good. I mean, oh my goodness. I don't know why my kids don't like dressing. Look at it. Look at it. I'm almost done though. But it's so good. If you like this video, Please click like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to share this. I'd like to do a special shout out this holiday season. <sighs> to all of those people that helped me get to 200 subscribers. I am so happy. Still got a long way to go, but I am blessed. I am thankful. Thank you to all of you who are showing support and love for this system. During this time of craziness with this whole pandemic, you got to find comfort. And one way to find comfort and some soul and some type of connection with others is through food. Food is so comforting. Delicious. Mm -hmm. I am here with you all. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is it a turkey piece? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
All right, excuse me. Got a piece of bone. Sorry, I had to step away. Man, this is the recipe. Like I said, if you like this video, click like, share, subscribe. You're going to do your praise dance when you taste this mug. So, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Thank you once again to all my fellow viewers. I love y'all. I will try my best to make sure I post up more videos this holiday season because I have a special treat coming to you all before Christmas. Yes, I do. I do. So thank you for watching. Have a great day. Happy hump day because it's Wednesday at the time of this recording, but I hope to have this posted up at least by Saturday so you guys can get y'all ingredients and everything together to do this video and do your recipe for Thanksgiving. So, like I said, thank you for watching. God bless and have a great day. Bye.